Have you ever needed to bag whoever creates your bug reports to include useful info, like for example the link to the page in question, or the environment, whether it was production or staging, or many other useful things like for example the time when the app was built or the version of the app? Well, I have, like every day actually, and today I'm going to show you how to put an end to all of this. Let's get right to it. Hey, Vlad here from devinsidey.com, welcome to another video. If you're new here, you should know that this is mostly a Scala channel, even though I make all kinds of software development related videos these days. In the Scala ecosystem, we have an awesome SBT built info plugin, which generates the source code for a very simple object that contains the built info for your application. Mill has an equivalent, by the way. Anyway, this object includes things like the version of your app, the version of Scala, the version of SPT. You can include a bunch of your own, and also it has many settings. If you wanted to learn how to use it, you could simply go through the README. It's pretty straightforward, but the devil is in the details. Today I'll show you how we use it in production, and also I created a slightly over-engineered repo for you so you can copy-paste the code. Let's get right to it, right out of the message from our sponsor, scalajobs.com, rustjobs.dev, and softwaremail.com. Check out the links in the description below if you're looking for a job or if you're looking for the JVM industry experts that will help you accomplish your mission. This video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program. Your contributions allow me to pay for a video editor and a thumbnail artist who save some of my time, which I usually end up spending with you, whether it's doing live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Huge shout out to my highest tier patrons, Brad Albu and Alexis Hernandez. Thank you. All right, so let me show you what we do in prod. So this is our app, and at the bottom left of the menu bar, when we hover of this app info thing, we actually show the app version, the Scala version, you know, SPT version, the build at time at the uh, time zone of the browser, and also in UTC, we show the git hash, and we use the git hash to tag the Docker images. We show the git branch on which it was built. This way, we also know, you know, that you know main went to production and things like this. We also show the environment. And when the user clicks over here, then it's actually copy it. And when we create a new issue, we use GitHub by the way instead of uh, Jira. So uh, we have a bug report template over here, and it has a section where you can uh, copy paste app, app info, right? So this is a placeholder. But if I go here and I paste it, and if we go to preview, it renders this. Uh, you know, all of this stuff in a pretty table. It adds a little bit more info, like for example, the browser or the link to the page and a cool thing, you know, the Git hash. And since we're talking about built info, I have it open over here. Obviously the link will be down in the description, but it's a pretty simple plugin, right? So you, you add it to your build, you enable it, and it will generate an object like this. But I'll show all of this to you in the project that I prepared for you. Okay, so this is the project and we're going to run it uh, three times, right? So first I'm going to do SBT main run. It's slightly over-engineered, so it's a multi-build project. So it has a project called main, which you know pretty much contains the Hello World app. And when you run it, it will show you the build in form. And uh, one of the important things here is that the build at time is unavailable. And the reason it's unavailable because I only enable it on CI because if you have it locally, it will pretty much destroy incremental compilation. Well, not really destroy, but you know it will always trigger the incremental compilation. Also, it shows git hash and git branch. Right now we don't have a git repo, right? So I'm gonna init a git repo and I'm gonna run the same thing again. And there you go. Now we're seeing git hash and we're seeing the main branch. And if I do CI equals true and then I do SPT main run, basically we'll need to recompile everything because you know CI true is now uh, set and so the entire build has changed, right? And so we're, cha we're showing the build at. Okay, so let me show you the code. As I already mentioned, this is a multi-build project. So we have the core, which is the business logic of our application. Again, this is a Hello World application that just shows the build, but I still split it up uh, into this architecture that I call the diamond architecture. I have a playlist over here uh, if you want to check it out. Okay, so we pretty much have the main, uh, which has a dependency injection. Then we have the portion which delivers our application, which is via the CLI, and it talks to the business logic, which then you know, talks uh, to something else that actually gives the build info. Okay, so it starts with the plugins file. Uh, let me open it over here, plugins file over here, right? So we're using the built info. the version right now is 0.11.0. So after you do this, you need to go to build.spt. And again, this is a multiple project. You don't need to add it to all of them. Uh, just add it to the one that is at the very bottom, right? Because because of the timestamp, right? So you want to you wanna know when when the the bottom one was actually built, okay? So uh, you enable it over here, you uh, change a couple of settings. For example, this is the package of the project of the of the object that is going to be generated. By the way, it's going to be generated over here in main target Scala 301 source managed uh, built in over here, right? So this is the the package that was specified. By the way, this is a Scala 3.3.1 project. It works the same way for Scala 2 as well. 
So uh, here you can enable a couple of keys that you want to be generated. For example, version Scala, version SPT version. Here they are, version Scala, version SPT version. Then I've added a couple of my own. It's basically a simple map, git hash and git, git branch. These two, they live in the, in the object called myutil. Uh, the entire project was generated with one of my uh, Jitter Red templates. I'll include the link down in the description. Uh, it's going to be at the very bottom because it's always included. Okay, so... Um, this is how we get it out, right? So this is a full git hash over here, and this is the branch over here, right? So I'm using a tiny private dev called run. Uh, Scala standard library has a built-in um, functionality to uh, talk to the underlying shell, okay? So we get it all out, and uh, we set a couple of settings. So one of the settings is that we don't want only vals, we also want the map, and the reason I do this is that uh, one of these vals, namely the build time, is not always going to be generated, right? It's only going to be generated on CI, right? And so I'm going to I'm going to show you how I access it. But essentially, I look into this map, right? And then if it's there, then I render it. If it's not there, I don't render it. Okay. And over here, this is this is the this is the meat essentially, right? So uh, SBT these days has a built-in uh, task that uh, tells you whether we are running on CI or not. Uh, all CIs out there, they set this environment variable CI equals true, uh, which is uh, how you saw, uh, this was the last command that I ran, right? So this is what's going to happen on CI. Okay, and then uh, the timestamp is going to be included, okay? So the built-in for uh, option like to map will always be included, but this one will only be included uh, if we're inside of CI. And by the way, this is a technique that I often use. Uh, I have a sequence with a bunch of options and then I flatten it, so only the ones that are sum are going to stay. Now, the reason why I uh, over-architectured this app is because um, at some point over here, I want to control uh, the data structure that comes out of this plugin. By the way, this plugin can also generate JSON, but it, JSON doesn't belong here. Okay, so this sits at the very bottom. We're going to run through the whole thing real quick. Uh, basically, we're constructing a case class called info, right? A very, very simple case class. But now I'm in control, right? So now I can say that this is an option, this is an option, this is an option, and so on. Okay, the implementation is very simple. We're actually going to this built info object that was generated uh, for us. Okay, so we're just getting, you know, we get we get out all the vals. Uh, these two are options, and uh, this val might be there or it might not be there, and therefore we're getting uh, getting it out uh, from the map, which comes in as any, and so uh, we're converting it to long. It's not a problem that you know that it might explode because it will never explode, right? Like if it explodes, it means that you know there's there's a bug, you know, in the plugin. Okay, and then you know the app probably won't start. Let me run through the entire app real quick. Again, it's you know very over engineered, but I did it on purpose so that you also have a have an example of the diamond architecture that um, I have introduced uh, many videos uh, before. Okay, so we're gonna start with the main over here. Okay, which pretty much you know displays the hyphens and then does program dot run. So if we go to uh, if we go to program, we're going to see that uh, this is usually the place where all the use cases are assembled together. In this case, there is only one use case called build, which is why there is a package called build. And inside of it, there is a top level definition, because we're in Scala 3, uh, called make. Okay, so make uh, generates a controller which lives in, in the delivery. And because it's a CLI app, all controllers notice that it's not in the package called build. Right? It's in the package called built info, which is the name of the entire app. So all controllers will look like this. In particular, there's one controller inside of build that actually you know, talks to the boundary, which is just a trait that the controller needs to go through in order to talk to the business logic. And so it calls run and it, it gets out the info, but we're gonna get to that, right? So the dependency graph, uh, it creates a controller. The controller wants the boundary. The implementation of the boundary is a business logic. The business logic needs the built-in for provider, which is a trait. And the implementation is uh, the thing that I showed you before, which uses the generated built-in for object. Okay. So if we go back to the dependency graph, again, controller.make creates uh, this controller over here. Uh, we use anonymous classes over here. Scala can infer the type of the controller, and uh, that, that's pretty much it. So the boundary is a simple trait that contains the uh, method that will give you the info, info again being just a simple case class. Okay, so um, the implementation is basically boundary.info, right? So give me the info and render, which is a tiny extension method over here, which pretty much does a, does a fancy to string. Okay, so this is the delivery portion of the application. So now if we wanted to go to the boundary, we would uh, ask it to go to the implementation. The implementation is the business logic, which contains only one method and it needs some sort of dependencies. I always use this facade for dependencies, even though in this particular case, the only thing that we need is you know this built-in for provider. So it's, again, it's a little bit over-engineered. Okay, so this is a factory method that I would use for my test so that I can fake only one thing. This is the one that I will actually use in the dependency graph, which is exactly what we saw before. Right over here, so we're calling that make. So over here, you don't even see that facade, okay? Which is over here. All right. So I've already shown you the info. Let's have a look at the dependencies. 
which is uh, over here, right? So again, this is a facade, unfortunately, for only one thing. So it's very, very over-engineered, okay? And the building for provider, simple trade, where is the implementation? By the way, there is no business logic. So the business logic simply uh, delegates to the um, to the dependencies. And there is only one dependency, uh, which is over here. I'm not sure what that is. And that's pretty much it. This is the entire app. Again, the the, the trick was uh, not to generate the build time, only, only to do that on CI. All right, so let's push it to GitHub real quick. So I'm going to remove that. And also I'm going to do GH. GHGI, which is my alias that is going to create a repo and push it all to GitHub and also open it in the browser. I'm going to include the link down in the description, but uh, this is going to be the repo. Uh, it's been really working uh, well for us in production because usually people always forget to include, you know, links or, you know, a bunch of other info. But this way, you know, one click, paste it in the ticket, done. I hope you like it. Check out the link to the repo in the description below, and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from DevInsideYou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe, if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today and you want to contribute to tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or simply by clicking the join button under the video. And watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.